Last Sunday we lit the candle of hope, and today we're going to light the candle of joy. Do I have a volunteer or volunteers? We've got two candles to light today, hope and joy. So next week we will have three candles uh, to light. And our, our joy verse for today, the angels reassured them, the shepherds, don't be afraid, he said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. Gaudete, rejoice in the Lord always. Joy is our focus this morning. In fact, I want to tell you how to live a joyful life. That's, that's what this morning's about, the good life. Mike Iaconelli, who was a well-known Christian writer and youth worker, um, who actually died in a car crash about 20 years ago, but he wrote a lot of good stuff. And here's one of the things he wrote. Most of us realize every now and again that we've become too serious, too tense, too stressed. The result is that we've forgotten how to live life. The childlikeness in all of us seems to get snuffed out over the years. And then he says, the sign that Jesus is in our hearts, the evidence of the truth of the gospel, is we still have a light on in our souls. We are alive, not boring, able to be playful, exhibiting in our everydayness the spunk of the spirit. The light in our souls is not some pietistic somberness. It is the spontaneous, unpredictable love of life. I'm not sure whether you agree with that or not. But here's what Irenaeus, one of the early church fathers, said. It's, it's much briefer, but it's the same kind of thing. The glory of God is man fully alive. He's saying that the way people see the wonderfulness of who God is, is us, human beings, living fully the life that God has for us. I, I really like that. The glory of God is man fully alive. What did Jesus say? Well, he put it like this. I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. Or you might be used to the phrase, life abundant. Jesus' words seem to suggest that both Iaconelli and Irenaeus were right. Those of us who say we're followers of Jesus should be enjoying a life that has a whole different dimension to it, a different quality to other people. That's what Jesus came for. Those are his words, not mine. This is why I've come, that you might have life in all its fullness. Well, what does that mean in practical terms? The first thing we need to be clear on is life in all its fullness is not the same as life in all its easiness. Jesus didn't say, I have come that you might have life in all its ease and comfort. He did not promise that following him meant there'd be no troubles, no struggles, no toils, no grief, no pain, no heartache, no times of darkness. That's not part of the picture. In fact, he said just the opposite. He said, I want you to take the way of the cross. If anybody would come with me, let him take up his cross. Deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. So he didn't promise a life where everything would be easy and, and pleasant and comfortable. Why is that? Why didn't Jesus say that? Follow me and it'll be great. Well, at least part of the answer lies in what Jesus said immediately before those words about life in all its fullness. He said, the thief comes only to rob, kill, and destroy. I've come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. That's at least a hint of the spiritual battle we're involved in in this life. There's an enemy. There's, there's an enemy who wants to rob us of all that Jesus came to give us. And we're in that battle the whole time, whether we're conscious of it or not. There's a thief who comes to rob and kill and destroy. It's very clear from what Jesus said. In many places, life in all its fullness is much less about your circumstances than it is about your approach to and your strength in the midst of those circumstances. That's such an important thing to learn. If you don't get that, really, if you don't get that, you will find following Jesus is a disappointment. If you come to Jesus thinking, great, great, 
Now life's going to be easy. Everything's going to be good. There'll be no more problems. It's not going to be very long before you're disappointed. Very important thing to learn. I want to share something I read this week. It might surprise you. It surprised me initially, but actually I think it's true. The difference between shallow happiness and a deep, sustaining joy is sorrow. Happiness lives where sorrow is not. When sorrow arrives, happiness dies. It can't stand pain. Joy, on the other hand, rises from sorrow and therefore can withstand all grief. Joy, by the grace of God, is the transfiguration of suffering into endurance and of endurance into character and of character into hope. And the hope that has become our joy does not as happiness must for those who depend on it, the hope that has become our joy does not disappoint us. Now you may think as I read those last few lines, that reminds me of something else. Well, it's very similar to what the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 5. So that's the first thing. Life in all its fullness is not life in all its easiness. Secondly, life in all its fullness does not live, look the same for everybody. But when I read those words of Iaconelli, you might have thought, well, that's all, all very well for him, but that's, that's not me. That's not what I'm like. Well, we're not called to uniformity. We're not all meant to fit the same mold. Enjoying life in all its fullness doesn't mean you've got to be bubbly and extroverted and the life and the soul of the party. Very important to understand. Rather... Life in all its fullness is about growing to be fully the person you were created to be, which may well be a quiet, reflective, serene type of person. In fact, one of the keys to living life in all its fullness is allowing Jesus to show you and help you to accept who you are, who you are. Allowing Jesus to show you and help you to accept who you are. And then to be and to become that person, not someone else, not what you think you should be like, who you are in all that its fullness. Maybe we could say the glory of God is you fully alive. You knowing who you are and being fully that person. The way God's glory will be seen in you is when you are fully the person you are created to be. You fully alive. The Bible emphasizes that each of us is a unique, unique creation. Only one. A unique creation of God and made for a specific purpose. Uh, Ephesians 2.10, and I've put you there instead of the we that is actually written. For you are God's masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. He has created you anew in Christ Jesus. So, What's that saying is God's created you, a masterpiece, but then in relationship with Jesus, he's remade you. He's recreated you so that you can do all of the good things he planned for you long ago. You, Christ's masterpiece, made new in Christ Jesus so you can do the good things he planned for you long ago. Each person unique. A huge part of living life in all its fullness is knowing who you are, discovering what sort of person you are, what you're made for, how you are wired, what you're passionate about, what you love to do, and how God wants to use that. For many people, a central aspect of that will be around their career. They've chosen a career that is something they love, something they're passionate about. And it's about working out how to use that, their passion and their gifts and their abilities, in a way that honors and glorifies God. For other people, it's, it'll have nothing to do with their job situation. It'll be much more around community or family or church. But working out, taking the time, making the effort to work out who you are, how you're wired, what you're passionate about, and then knowing what you're called to do with that and centering your life around it is critical for living life in all of its fullness. All of us, it's so important to find out who we are, what we're here for, and then to enjoy being that person 
fulfilling that purpose and continuing to grow in that throughout our lives. That's where life in all its fullness will be found. So, life in all its fullness is not life in all its easiness. Life in all its fullness doesn't live the same, look the same for every person. Be and become who you were created to be. Third thing, don't carry baggage with you. Joan Olomo was a great All Black, one of the greatest, but he had major health problems, uh, major issues with kidney disease, and in the end had a kidney transplant. And he said after he'd had that transplant and, and was recovering, he realised what life for him had been like pre-transplant. Uh, even when he was playing rugby, he said for so long, because of his kidney disease, it was like whatever I was doing, even charging down the wing and diving over to score a great try in the corner, whatever I was doing felt like I was always carrying around a backpack full of rocks on my shoulder. It just made everything so much harder, like carrying around a backpack full of rocks on my shoulder. You know, a lot of people live like that. And the reason is disease, not necessarily physical disease, but Whatever they're doing, every aspect of their lives, they're, they're carrying around this backpack of rocks with them, trying to live life while still carrying this thing. It may be the disease of disappointment, disappointment with God, perhaps. It may be the disease of guilt or bitterness, unforgiveness, feeling that you've failed or you are a failure. You don't live up to other people's expectations. Rocks that you're carrying around all the time, whatever you're doing. Weighing you down. Rocks from the past that make it incredibly hard. In fact, they make it absolutely impossible to live life in anything like all its fullness. That backpack's got to be put down. Those rocks have got to be discarded. That disease, whatever it is, has got to be healed. Now, sometimes doing that in itself can be a, a challenging, difficult, even painful journey. Dealing with stuff from the past. Keep on making the choice. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get through this because it's worth it. The destination is life in all its fullness, the way you're meant to be living. You see, experiencing life in all its fullness is not an automatic result of just deciding to follow Jesus. That's the first step, but that's not the end result. You've got to do what Jesus says. In other words, you've got to truly follow him. What does that look like? Well, it looks like going where he's going, doing what he's doing, living the way he lived, having the attitudes he had. That's what following Jesus is. Not just saying, oh, I'm a follower of Jesus and come to church. Actually following his way. Being obedient to him because you trust him. And as he puts his finger on stuff in your life that needs healing, needs dealing with, stuff you've got to be set free from, the rocks in your backpack that you're carting around all the time so that you can enjoy life in all its fullness, you've got to trust him and do what he says. The journey to life in all its fullness usually starts actually with confession. Acknowledging to yourself and to God and very often, and this can be the hardest part, to at least one other person, this is a rock I've been carrying around. I need to deal with this. Will you help me? So the healing can begin. Opening up, letting someone else in, even if it's simply to pray with you. There's an area in my life, probably I'm a little ashamed of it, I really need some help. So the healing can begin, the rocks can start to be laid down. And that leads to what I believe is another crucial key for experiencing life in all its fullness. And that's really valuing community. Human beings are created for relationship. And Christians are recreated for the most in-depth human relationships as brothers and sisters in Christ. One of the first things we have a record of God saying is, it's not good for the man to be alone. We are made for relationship. We all need, we may not always want, but we certainly need relationships of intimacy. And that's certainly what being part of the family of God is about. We need 
to trust and be trusted. We need to love and be loved. We need to know and be known. We need to accept and be accepted no matter what. Now that's a description really of what family is meant to be. Sadly, it isn't always. It's also a description of what church family, Christian community is meant to be. And again, sadly, it isn't always. But that's what it should be because that's what we all need to trust and be trusted, to love and be loved, to know, to really know and be known, to accept and be accepted no matter what. Unconditional love, loving and being loved. Have a look at that list. How good are you, how good are you at that stuff? How willing are you for that kind of relationship with others? How good are you at accepting what you need and offering what others need? To be fully human and certainly to be fully Christian, to live life in all its fullness, we need close, honest, real relationships with other human beings. Now again, that need will be met in different ways for different people. Some people will need a greater number of depth relationships than others. For some people, those relationships will need to involve a lot of talking. While for others, it's much more about just having someone to be with, to be relaxed and totally at ease with, and not much needs to be said. For some, the need will be met primarily in marriage and family relationships. For others, they need a much wider range of deep, close, honest relationships. But the need is there for all of us. And God's design for all of us is that a significant aspect of the meeting of that need is to be through our committed involvement with a group of fellow believers in a faith community, a church fellowship. Now, I could say a lot more about that, and I've said more about it on other occasions. But let me just say this. Eastview, if it is to be worthy of the title church, must be more than a place where you just turn up for services and events. It must be literally a community of faith. And every person who's part of Eastview has a responsibility to contributing to making it so. Yeah? It's not just something you can leave to everybody else and you'll just sit in your corner and be alone. Every person who is part of Eastview has the responsibility to contribute to making Eastview literally a community of faith. A safe place for people to be real and honest, open, accepting, free of gossip and judgment and condemnation, full of grace and love and acceptance, support, encouragement. And you need to be willing to trust others enough to be real and honest with yourself. So, how do we live the good life? The life that Jesus said he came to give us? Focus on finding and becoming and being who you were created to be. Don't carry baggage with you and really value community. I said last week that Advent reminds us God is a God of mission. He sent his son on the greatest mission of all, to rescue all of humanity, all of creation. I want to tell you a story about a man called Justin, who was a friend of friends of ours who were missionaries. They, they actually went to England, which you might not think of as a place where you send missionaries to, but they went to be part of a, a, a movement called Betel, which it, it aims to plant churches amongst addicts. Now, that's not the easiest place to plant a church, but that's what Betel, well, its mission is, to plant churches amongst addicts. And this is a little bit of Justin's story. Justin comes from South Wales. He celebrated his second anniversary at Patel on Friday. When we asked Justin what he thought about Advent, he said, well, I could probably say a lot about it if I knew what it was. When we told him it was about Jesus coming to earth and all of the things he brought to us, like hope, joy, peace, and love, Justin's eyes lit up. Jesus gave me back my life, he said. I had nothing before I met him. On Christmas Day in 2011, I woke up in Istanbul. I didn't know where I was. I'd planned a holiday, packed t-shirts and shorts, and the weather outside was minus four. 
I was thousands of miles away from my son on the most important day of the year. I have no idea how I got to Istanbul. I couldn't remember the past two weeks at all. I knew I had to change my life. I was desperate for change. So I came here to Battelle. And I stopped trusting anything that I wanted to do and just started listening to others around me and trying to listen to God. You see, my heart was really evil. And I just couldn't trust it at all. I had to trust something outside of myself because I'd always been a criminal and a heroin addict since I was 14. I'd hurt people all of my life and I didn't want to anymore. Now, now I just have all of this joy. Joy is something that just radiates out of Justin. To spend any time around him is to end up laughing and smiling and coming away changed. His joy is infectious. He says, Jesus is my joy, my life, my everything. Without him, I'd be dead by now. I have no life apart from him. I just can't wait to see his face and be in his presence. Justin now leads a house full of 20 recovering addicts, just like he was. His life has been transformed by the coming of Jesus, the light of the world coming into the great darkness of planet Earth. Justin has a life that is changed because Jesus came to bring him life. Life that he'd never had before. Life in all its fullness, overflowing with joy. That's a story of somebody who started to learn who he was in Jesus. Was able to start laying down the rocks that he'd been carrying down. Started to really value community, knowing that's what he needed for life in all its fullness. I have come, Jesus said, in order that you, you might have life. Life in all its fullness. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God. And may our celebration here this morning spill over into our everyday lives so that our lives and our communal life together can exude celebration in the Lord as we hold each other up in the faith and reach out into our world. In the name of the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.